Aren't you thankful the Lord gives us opportunities to pour our lives into others? It does make a difference. I invite you to take your Bibles, turn to Lamentations chapter 3. I tried to run from this passage to be real honest with you. Didn't really uh, want to preach on it. And I'll tell you why here in a moment. Lamentations chapter 3, begin reading with me in verse 19. Remember, Jeremiah is in a difficult place in his life. He feels like God has left him. God has abandoned the children of Israel and himself. And he says this in verse 18, I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Verse 19, remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. Verse 21, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. In the darkest nights, in the multitude of our troubles that we have in this life, and even at the times when we feel that we have been abandoned by our friends and our loved ones, where do you go? I think this is where Jeremiah finds himself. Everything that was stable in his life was gone. The city that he loved, Jerusalem, the people had been taken into exile, even the favor of God is nowhere to be found. God is no longer speaking to His people. Remember, the truth had vanished. And now, even at a point, God looks like the enemy. In those circumstances, underneath that umbrella, think about it, Jeremiah says there in verse 21, Therefore, I have hope. Over the last several weeks, my life has been touched by a couple of different circumstances where I think people came to this point in their life. They felt like they had nothing. And the end result was that they ended their life. One of them was a young man who attended this church for a while as a teenager. He came here with another one of his friends, sat in my youth group. I shared with him the same gospel that I shared with all the other young people who came. He went on the same outings that all the rest of these young people went on that traveled with me. We enjoyed times laughing together and playing together and sharing about his family and the concerns that he had in his life. As he grew up, life moved on. He got involved in the career, got married, life went on. But something happened in his life where he came to a point where he thought, there's nothing here. In the darkest time of his life, for whatever reason, and I don't know them all, Perhaps he felt abandoned by his family, his friends, those that cared about him. And in the darkest corners of his mind, he decided to end his life. Perhaps many of you are facing some very difficult times in your life. If you're not, you know a friend that is. A co-worker. Maybe someone else in your family. And they look around at times and perhaps you don't have any way to talk with them. You don't know how to share with them. You don't know what to tell them. But as I look back through this passage again, I remember what Jeremiah said, Therefore, I have hope. So where does Jeremiah go in all of his troubles and all the things that he was facing? Even a strong man of faith, a chosen prophet of God. Where does he go when all those things turn against him? He goes to God. Maybe it's instinctive because he is a prophet of God. Maybe he learned it from the wisdom that he had from God. I'm not sure. I think God does give us wisdom that comes from learning about God and knowing God. And oftentimes that wisdom that God gives us comes to us in the good times and even in the small, simple things of life. I want to call it everyday faith. Sometimes God gives us the truth and the wisdom and the strength that we need 
as we go through the good in life, and even in the most simplest things of life, so that when we face the difficulties of life, we go, God's good. You see, when the blessings are just pouring out in our life and everything is going well and it looks like the plans of our life are just unfolding before us and God is blessing them, we thank God and we praise God because God is good and God is blessing us and God is directing our life and God is affording us all those things. But somehow or another, when we hit the difficult times, we think all of a sudden God doesn't care anymore. And what Jeremiah is going back, he's remembering the goodness of God and the greatness of God and the faithfulness of God. And because of that, in the darkest times of his life, Jeremiah says, no, God is still good. <laughs> Let me remind you of a few things. We've got to learn to trust God and come to God when all things are well and good in our life. You see, when the good things are happening, you better thank Him and praise Him. Go to Him every day that everything is working out and everything is going well. Listen to me. You praise Him and you thank Him and you do all that you can to tell others how good God is. Listen to me, because when the tough times come along, you need to praise Him as well. And if you'll praise Him in the good, listen to me, you'll praise Him in the bad. You will. It'll become a part of your life. It'll become instinctive. Because God does all things well. Let me remind you a few things. Listen to me just for a minute. The truth of the Word of God does not change based on our circumstances. Listen. That God is good. That God blesses those who are His children. That God never leaves them. That God never forsakes them. That God wants all good things. He's the giver of all good gifts. That's what God wants in our life. Listen to me. That does not change because there are difficult times in my life. If my health fails, if finances change, if relationships change, understand that does not change the truth of the Word of God. God reminded the children of Israel, if you're obedient to me and you're faithful to me, I'll be faithful to you. I'll bless you. In fact, you know what? I'll bless them that bless you. But if you're disobedient and you worship other gods and you're unfaithful to me, watch out. I'll discipline you. But many times when we, we look at the truth of the Word of God and we say, oh, God is good all the time. God is faithful. God is great. And we do that in the good times. But let me encourage you, listen to me, those truths do not change in the difficult times either. Let me take it a step further for a minute. God's character or His nature does not change based on our circumstances either. Listen, God is loving, God is kind, God is gracious, God is merciful, God is good, yes, and that does not change. I may change, my circumstances may change, my course in life may change, but that does not change the character of God. God is always merciful. Remember the message from last week? God is always kind. God is always gracious. Israel was looking at God like they had abandoned, God had abandoned them. And God in His mercy was disciplining them to bring them back to Him. That's all He was doing. Israel looked at it and said, listen, God's, God's mean. God is judgmental. And, and, and God doesn't care about us. He's abandoned us. He's walked away from us. But no, in God's mercy, God put the law into place to bring Israel back so that He could bless them. God's character did not change. He was still kind. He was still merciful. He was still gracious. Listen to me. God wants you to come to Him in your time of need. In your time of desperation, listen to me, God wants you to come to Him. Many times we think that God doesn't care, that God wants to run from us, or God doesn't care about us, or that God has abandoned us. No, listen, just the opposite. When you are in need, guess what? God wants you to come. Now, I'll be honest with you. That's, that's not true in our lives. You see, we don't like people who are in need. We, we just don't like them. Because they drain us. They take up our time, they take up our energy, they take up our money, 
take our just our they just drain us. They're hard to deal with. Those people who are in need all the time, they they discourage you and you just don't want to be around the people that are in need. Guess what? God wants you there. God wants you to come to Him. God wants you to be that desiring to come into Him to come into your life. You see, I've, I've found out some things that human sympathy is good, but it does little to meet our needs. God is the one who can help us. In fact, I encourage you, look in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The Apostle Paul oftentimes found himself in need. You see, that desire that we have or that demand that we have for sympathy or help in our life, that's a weakness, but that's okay. Look what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 9 and 10. He said, listen, in my time of need. Look what it says. Lord, I I prayed. Remove this thorn from me. I'm tired of it. I need you, God. And here's what God said. And He said unto me, my grace is sufficient. Paul. For my strength is made perfect in what? Weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I may take pleasure in infirmities and reproach and necessities and persecution and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am what? Strong. Listen to me. God wants you to come to Him in your time of weakness. Why? Because in those times, He can make you what? Strong. He is your strength. He is your hope. You cannot live this life by yourself and in yourself. You need God. Paul found that out. But God, why would you do this? I'm glad you asked. Why didn't God take that form from Paul's side? What was God trying to teach the Apostle Paul? He was trying to get him to remember And not provide relief. You see, in our troubles and our weakness, we need to be brought back to the thought, let God take care of it. Paul had to come to the place in his life where he just surrendered the entire situation to God. Lord, listen, if you want the thorn to be there, I'm good. Your grace is sufficient, and in my weakness, in my pain, in my suffering, God, you will make me strong. So what am I trying to tell you? One, surrender the situation to God. (laughs) Listen. I've told you this before, but stay with me just for a second. There's some things you can't fix. You know that? And you'll kill yourself trying to do it. Some things you can't change. And some of us will drive ourselves to the point of desperation trying to change it. Listen to me. Surrender it to God. Let God take care of it. And God will do one of two things. Listen to me. Just like the Apostle Paul said, listen, either God will take care of it or He'll give you the grace that's sufficient to meet that need head on. Either way, listen to me, God has answered your prayer. You see, if God sees our troubles, and I know He does, and if He hears our humble cries and our desperate cry, listen to me, God will respond. Now, I know what you're thinking, Brother Mark. I've been praying for some stuff for a long time. Listen to me. His grace is sufficient. Leave it in the hands of God. Let God respond. Now, let me take you down the path just for a minute. He may not always respond the way you want Him to respond. Let me give you a few examples. Remember when David prayed for his child to come back to life? He didn't. Remember when Christ prayed for the cup to pass from Him in the Garden of Gethsemane? Guess what? God gave Him what? The cross. Remember Naaman in the Old Testament when he wanted to be healed? God sent him to a muddy Jordan River. That's not where he wanted to go. That's what not, Naaman did not want that. Paul said, remove this thorn three different times. And God said, no, I'll just give you grace. 
Listen, sometimes God will not answer the prayer the way we think that He should. But let me suggest something to you. Maybe we should pray more for the strength to rely on God's goodness instead of giving God detailed instructions of how the things should be handled. Don't we do that? Hey, at this point it's either amen or oh me. Say it with me. You see what we do? We say, Lord, here's the need. Here's what I need to happen. Here's the way I want it to happen. So God, you make it happen. <laughs> That's what we do. God says, just let me handle it. Just surrender it to me and watch what I'll do. Remember the children of Israel there at the Red Sea? Egyptian army behind them, Red Sea in front of them. Their options were what? Go back to Egypt. Or either go into the river, the sea and die. That was their two, their two options. God said, let me take care of this. I'll just part the Red Sea. Never cross the children of Israel's mind. They never dreamed God would open that sea, did they? They never dreamed that they would walk across on that dry land. That never crossed into their mind, never once. When they were facing that Egyptian army, did they think that would happen? And God said, just wait and watch. Will you trust me? Folks, I want you to understand, I think sometimes in our life, God is doing the very same thing. He puts us in those desperate situations, those impossible situations in our life, and God says, will you trust me? Because if you'll trust me, listen, I'm going to do something you can't even imagine. But you've got to trust me first. Will you trust me? Notice that Moses didn't turn around and look at God and say, okay, God, here's what I want to happen. I want you to stop this side of the sea. I want you to stop that side of the sea. I want you to dry this ground up. We're going to walk across it. When we walk across it, God, exactly when we step on the other side, we want you to flood the Egyptian army and kill them. God, that's exactly the way I want it done. In fact, God, I'll tell you what would be even better. Just, a, just build a bridge across that thing right now. Listen, Moses didn't do that, did he? What did he do? He said, just stand still and watch the salvation of God. Did Moses know what God was going to do? I don't think so. God said, put your... Yeah, watch the sea part. Listen, folks. Sometimes we just need to trust God. Pray for the strength to rely on God and then let Him take care of whatever's going on in our life. You see, what God has provided in all of our life, and I think what He was trying to tell Jeremiah here, and it's what Jeremiah was proclaiming, I think is, you have hope. In Jesus Christ. You have an assurance of hope. This is a dark time for the children of Israel. They needed some assurance of what God was going to do. And Jeremiah needed that hope as well. Let me remind you of something. Folks, listen to me. God knows when you're hurting. You may not think it, but listen to me. He's already there. God is already there. He is giving you that assurance of hope that you need in your life. Remember, listen to me, our God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Our God is omniscient. He knows everything. Listen to me, God knows your needs. And here's the best part about it, listen to me, He's already active meeting those needs in your life. You see what's so mind-boggling to me, what is so hard for me to comprehend, Hint is many times when we pray to God, God is already doing what He needs to do. He's already active doing exactly what needs to happen before I even pray. I just can't see it. I don't know the plans that He's putting in place, but God is already at work before I even pray. Why? Because He knows what I need. You say, Brother Mark, then I don't need to pray. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm telling you. He still wants you to pray. Listen, God has things in place that's going to happen years down the road in your life. Listen to me. God is already active and already working in your life right now to meet your needs. It's amazing what God does. You see, we pray for mercy of God. Listen to me. May, God may not respond by becoming more merciful, but by showing us who He is and that His mercy is already at work. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Go, you can go look at, I think it's in John chapter 11. Remember when Lazarus died? Mary and Martha's brother. They sent for Jesus to come. Remember that? Lord, our, our brother's sick. Why don't you come and heal him? Christ didn't come right then, did He? 
Well, that would have been the merciful thing to do, right? Just to come and heal Lazarus so he didn't die. That would have been the most merciful thing to do. But listen, no, 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 no. What did Christ do? He waited until Lazarus had been dead. Several days. Then he shows up at Mary and Martha's house. They're all upset. Lord, listen, there's people crying. They love Lazarus. The sisters are so upset. Their brother has died. Was God mercifully acting? Even while Lazarus was sick? Yes. Mary Martha had no idea that Christ was going to bring Lazarus back from the dead. And that countless lives would be changed, including theirs, because of the act of mercy of bringing Lazarus back from the dead. They had no idea what was going to happen. Was God merciful? Yes. Was He merciful in, in, in not coming to heal Lazarus? Yes. Was He more merciful when He brought him back from the dead? No. His mercy was already there. Let me share with you a few thoughts just for a minute. You see, we as Christians, we can have this same hope. You see, we are, and we as Christians can believe in the character of God. We can believe in His nature and His mercy and His love. You see, that's where our faith enters in. We see, because of our faith, that God is there. Listen to me. If God wasn't there, it would be a whole lot worse, folks. We look at some things going on in our life and we say, Lord, be merciful. Lord, help me. Lord, intervene here. But listen to me, God's already there because if God wasn't there, it'd be a whole lot worse than what it is now. <laughs> we look around in our culture sometimes and we say, Lord, please. Listen, He's still there because if He wasn't, it'd be much worse than it is now. God is gracious. God is kind. His character does not change. And by our faith, we should see that. I remember one time <laughs> dealing with a young man who got lost in the woods. We were on a retreat and he ventured off and didn't really know where he was at. So eventually, I knew kind of the path he had taken and got to the point, found him along the way. When I found him, I thought he would be just tremendously just upset. I thought he would just be so scared. He was sitting very calmly on a little rock by a little creek sitting there. And I said, are you okay? Yeah. Are you scared? Nope. Were you nervous? Nope. Why? I knew you was going to come look for me. <laughs> you weren't going to leave me here. You weren't going to drive off and leave me. I knew that you would come and look for me. I knew that you cared about me. And I knew you weren't going to leave, that you was going to come and find me somewhere along the way. Listen to me, listen to it. That's the way God is with us, folks. You may be lost, you may be in desperate times in your life, but let me remind you, God is looking for you. God is searching for you. God is still there. He is loving, He's kind, He's merciful, He's gracious. That does not change. And my faith says that in those times of desperation, I believe in God. I know He's coming to look for me. I know He's already working those things out of my life that I don't even begin to understand. But He's working those things out. You see, I have faith in that God is able and He's active. Brother Mark, what are you trying to tell me? See, that's where prayer comes in. Remember I said, don't quit praying. Because you know when I pray, you know what happens? I begin to see things from God's perspective and not mine. <laughs> those times of desperation and those times of need, I begin to think, God, what are you trying to tell me here? God, what are you trying to teach me here? God, what door are you opening for me here? I begin to see everything differently when I begin to pray. And I have that faith and I, I believe in the character of God, the mercy of God, that God does no thing. All things are going to work together for my good. And when I begin to trust God, 
I begin to see things from God's eyes that God does all things good. and No matter if it's persecution or desperation or, or needs that are in my life, God has placed them there for my good to bring glory to Him. Wow, that changes everything. That's what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians. I go through the persecutions. I go through the desperate times of my life. Why do I go through them? To bring glory to God. So where does this hope come from? It comes from God. Let me say this, folks. This is going to be earth shattering. Hope that comes from God is enough. Hope that comes from God is enough. Even in the storms, His hope is enough. Why is God the best grounds for our hope? Hmm. Look in verse 24 of the text. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. Why is hope from God enough? Hmm. Because God is good. Listen to me. People are selfish. They're thoughtless and they're indifferent. God is loving, merciful, and gracious. God is good. That's why hope from Him is enough. God is faithful. He has invited our confidence in Him. And He's promised hope to all those who are obedient and will trust in Him. Listen to me. God is faithful. Third, listen to me. He is almighty. From what are you trying to tell me? That means what God said, God will do. There is no inability in God to meet our needs. He can and He will meet our needs. Listen to me, dear friend. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul, as he was making a defense of his faith in the book of Romans, he wrote a very interesting transitional verse. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. People who are under intense persecution for their faith. Here's what he says. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith, that's what I talked about, into this grace wherein we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of glory. Where is our hope? It's in Jesus Christ. How do we access that hope? Through faith. Through grace. In Mark chapter 5, there's an interesting account. There's a gentleman who comes to Jesus Christ, his daughter has died. In desperation, he comes running to Jesus Christ. And here's what he says. My only hope is you. The only hope my daughter has is you. Folks, listen to me. The only hope we have in this life is Jesus Christ. The only hope we have in life eternal is Jesus Christ. He works all things together for our good and His glory. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know the difficult times that you're going through right now. But I want to leave you with this, folks. Listen to me. You can have hope in Jesus Christ. Will you trust Him today? Will you trust Him in the good? But will you trust Him in the bad? Let's pray. Our Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You that we have hope in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank You that You are already actively working out 
needs in our life. Lord, I, I'm, I'm not naive enough. I know there are people sitting here within the sound of my voice who are in desperation. At times they feel like they have been abandoned by God, by family, by friends. And they feel like there is no way out. There is no hope. But Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of Your Word, remind them today there is hope in Jesus Christ. They can't even begin to imagine how their life will turn out. Some of them are in desperate situations. They have been abandoned, literally. By their parents, by their friends, by their family. And some of them are facing some very desperate times. They don't know where they're going to live tomorrow. Perhaps financially, they don't see how they're going to make it through this life. Or even physically, there's some that are facing difficult times. God, would you remind us today that our hope is in Jesus Christ. And that you are already actively working things out for our good if we will trust you. Lord, help us today to put our faith and trust in you. I'm going to ask you to stand with your head bowed, dry.